Hey guys, I'm Abur and welcome to my first The Conflict, The Brawl and The Broadside video. Now this series of videos will showcase some of the best ship on ship combo that I've seen in World of Warships, from the 7 kill wonders to the magazine detonations. Today we have a replay sent in by Crazy Harry in his Shimikaze Tier 10 Japanese Destroyer. Now the Shimikaze is famed in World of Warships for having the devastating long lance torpedoes, which can go in excess of 20 kilometers and can deal a substantial amount of damage. The Shimikaze can also go to a top speed of nearly 40 knots and can remain hidden with its very high concealment rating. So the Shimikaze is much better than the American equivalent. The American equivalent can only go to around 10 to 15 kilometers maximum distance, um, but the Shimikaze doesn't have very good overall firepower. The Shimikaze, um, its weakest part, along with most of the Japanese destroyers, is its firepower with its main guns. The Shimikaze is limited to 127 millimeter guns, um, which can only go to a maximum distance of around 9 kilometers. But the Japanese destroyers don't focus on guns, they mostly focus on torpedoes, and with the Shimikaze, the torpedoes are fantastic. So this is Crazy Harry on Hotspot Encounter Mode. So Encounter Mode is where there's one cap in the middle, and both teams have to rush to either cap or kill the enemy team as quickly as possible. So in this match, uh, Crazy Harry has five destroyers on his team, along with the enemy team's five as well. This game is very evenly matched. On Crazy Harry's team, there are two carriers, three battleships, two cruisers, and five destroyers. Now, Crazy Harry has sent me in a few replays, and they're all very, very good. This one is the best of the bunch, and he usually does his tactic on hotspot on this game mode, um, where he rushes just beyond the island in front of him, as you can see here, and that's where the enemies spawn. Now, that's a fantastic spot to um, fire if you have very long distance torpedoes and he's in a Shimakaze and these torpedoes go in excess of 20 kilometers. So the idea really is to get behind this rock, fire your torpedoes, try and get the enemy carriers or battleships and then flee. Now, the concealment is very high on the ship and you can very easily fire the torpedoes and get away very quickly as long as no other ships come this way. The torpedo reloading time is quite respectable in the Shimakaze um, of around two minutes. It has a fantastic payload of 15 torpedoes within a very short space of time. So there are two enemy battleships over there, the Montana and the Izumo. Now the problem with this ship really is the guns. You can't actually target enemy ships unless they're within your firing range. Uh, and that means you can't lead your torpedoes. You would usually press X on a target, it would then focus on that target and then you can fire your torpedoes and it gives you sort of a, an idea of where to fire. It gives you like a white marker, an indicator of where to fire. But because of the poor range on guns, Crazy Harry can't do that. And now he's been spotted. So the Shimikaze is over there 5.4 kilometers away. He's going to fire one salvo of high explosive, maybe to try and set him on fire. Shots going in. Albeit for only a small amount of damage, but the Shimikaze is firing him as well, along with the enemy battleships. He's got to avoid them. He has torpedoes ready in two seconds, firing another salvo. Hit him again, but this time knocked out torpedoes and the engine. But the enemy Shimikaze knocked out his engine as well. So he hit the repair button. Torpedoes ready any second now, but he has deployed smoke. The smoke kicked in, and now he's safe. So there's a Montana, an Izumo, and a Taiho in the distance there. The carrier, the tier 9 carrier, the Taiho, is a big threat. Crazy Harry is thinking about using torpedoes. Round they come, and he's going to fire a couple of spreads on the Taiho. Now, I've noticed Harry use this a couple of times to kill off the enemy carrier quickly to give his team a massive boost in terms of ship-on-ship -ship combat. And three spreads of torpedoes there, 15 in total, up to 20 kilometers in maximum distance. So hopefully the Taiho will be destroyed. The Benson has now got around the smoke and now is visible at only 6.2 kilometers away, but Crazy Harry hasn't been spotted until now. Now he has. Firing a couple of shots at this Benson. The Benson is very good in maneuverability. Has good torpedoes as well, but they are very short distance. The gun firepower on the Benson is far superior than Crazy Harry Shimakaze. Shots going in though. Set him on fire and knocked out his engines. Now the Benson is sitting there unless he has repair. He's firing again. The reload on these guns is quite good, but now one of Crazy Harry's turrets has been knocked out, so now he's only limited to two turrets as opposed to three. So the Benson is still sitting there, but it does seem like he has repaired. He's moving quite fast. Hit him again there for only 700, and he's going to fire again and again to try and knock him out. So fired there at the back. Not a lot of damage. 700 again. It seems like the 700 is the base damage. Someone knocked out Crazy Harry's engine. He's immobilized for the next few seconds. He has hit repair. The repair does reload quite quickly on the Shimikaze, only 40 seconds. The Montana is behind the Benson. He is detected, so he can take lots of damage. He did do a torpedo hit to someone, and he knocked out the Benson's engine. So the Benson now can't repair. He has a few seconds before he can repair, so now he's sitting in the water, idly doing nothing. But he is concealed, so 6.7 kilometers away. He can't really see where he is at the moment, so he's firing blind. But 
If you see this, it says destroyed. He did not knock out the Benson. The torpedoes went straight through the ranks, straight through all the enemy ships, and knocked out the Taiho. So Crazy Harry fired one initial spread of torpedoes, knocked out the Taiho in excess of 16 kilometers. That's fantastic. And now that gives his team a massive boost in terms of ship on ship combat. So now he's thinking he better get away. He has torpedoes ready in five seconds. Um, he's doing side on. He's now hidden. As you can see, his perk has not gone off. So the destroyers can't spot him for now. And he's safe. Um, he does have some ships on his um, right, though, he, which he can't see because he's focused too much on the Montana, which is fine. So he's going to do three spreads of torpedoes to try and take out this Montana. You may notice the Montana is facing forward, and the best way to really shoot at a forward target is to do sideways torpedoes. And that's exactly what Crazy Harry is doing. He turned his ship at an angle and then fired the torpedoes. So the torpedoes are coming in at a slight angle and they're not going straight. So it's, it's kind of deceiving for the Montana. The Montana might move thinking it's going forward and then get hit, get sideswiped by one of those torpedoes. So in terms of the match, Crazy Harry's team isn't winning. They've lost a Nagato and two for bookies. But Crazy Harry has knocked out that carrier, which gives his team an advantage. His team is capping. It seems like the enemy from the uh, northeast side of the map has taken over quite a vast amount of space and they're pushing closer and closer to his team's carriers. The torpedoes are coming in very close to the Montana and the Izumo. In they come. The Montana took a hit. Induced flooding, 16,000 damage. The Izumo is side on to some torpedoes. Will they hit? <sighs> the back ones missed him by a very, very small amount. But the Izumo will come around and Crazy Harry has his torpedoes ready in about 40 seconds, along with smoke, if necessary. So we know behind that smoke, the Benson's there, along with the Shimakaze, the Izumo, and the Montana. So he's thinking of the best approach, really. He's keeping the distance away from the enemy ships. If he gets spotted now, then along with all destroyers in the game, they are very weak when they get spotted. He's waiting for his torpedoes to reload five seconds from now, and he has smoke if necessary. So the Izumo's at nine kilometers away, and the Montana is 10 kilometers away. So he's thinking Montana's the best option. He's side on to Crazy Harry at the moment. He's gone to a complete stop to try and get some good shots into the Montana and hopefully maybe a destroyer. So he's firing a couple of shots. Usually I would dissipate a bit from the white marker, usually analyze where they're going and then fire the torpedoes. He's done this third spread, which very intelligently is heading towards the Izumo. The Izumo is also side on and coming closer and closer to the Montana. So two shots towards the Montana and one towards the Izumo. So the first two spreads were very narrow and the last one was very wide. So hopefully the wide one can maybe hit the Montana and the Izumo. So the spotting range of the Shimakaze uh, of enemy ships to spot you is around 7 kilometers, and the Izumo is now at 6.9 kilometers. So you would expect the Izumo to spot Crazy Harry any second from now. So the Izumo is speeding up now to try and avoid those three torpedoes, but he's moving closer and closer into the more densely packed torpedoes. So in he comes. The Montana does seem like he's slowing down to avoid most of the incoming torpedoes, but the Izumo is going very, very fast. In they go, hit the front of the ship for 14,000 damage. He missed the second one by a very small margin, but it has induced flooding. So now it's doing flooding damage, which is around 500 per three seconds or so. The Izumo is doomed. Last bit of health, and there he is. The Montana did move very carefully there and he did move into the torpedoes at a very late stage and avoided all the torpedoes. So well played to the Montana. Crazy Harry has his torpedoes ready in 45 seconds so he has to play it carefully here. He popped his smoke. He's very close to the Montana. He has to keep away at this distance and just move along until his torpedoes are ready and then he can use them over and over again. So while hiding the smoke, Crazy Harry has seen that the enemy is capping the base. There's three ships there and he's going that way to hopefully assist the team in decapping the base. At this point in the match, Crazy Harry's team is losing by a couple of ships. The enemy team, however, has four destroyers, so that makes them more of an easy target to kill. They have no carriers left versus Crazy Harry's two carriers left, um, two battleships, Cruiser and Shimakaze. So Crazy Harry's team, despite losing on the board, has a massive advantage in this situation. Now he's firing at the Montana. He has been spotted by planes. He did disable anti-air capability, but uh, he got spotted nonetheless, so now he's going to fire anyway firing a couple of shots on the Montana until he goes outside of his surface detectability range and then remains hidden again. So he's firing a couple of shots there. Now he's moving away. He has no smoke at the moment, but he will remain hidden any second from now. And now Crazy Harry is invisible. And now he's going to head towards the middle of the map and assist the allies in decapping the base and secure the victory. So at this point in the match, it does look very good for Crazy Harry's team. The enemy has three destroyers up and Crazy Harry's team has two carriers remaining. And of course, carriers are a really big threat against enemy battleships, of which the enemy has two. So he's heading towards the cap. He has torpedoes ready any time. One minute 30 until smoke. Crazy Harry is in a very good position here. 
Uh, quite a lot of health remaining, so he can play a little bit risky if necessary. The enemy Montana is trying to rush down the Allied carriers um, with the other battleship, take them out, and then come back and then rescue the Cap. The Montana is a very slow ship, albeit a very powerful ship. Uh, it does take some time for it to actually get anywhere. So the cap is now half captured. There's a destroyer there, at least one destroyer in there, uh, and a Fabuki. So there's two destroyers in the cap now. The Montana is well out of range, so he's just checking the range, see if he can get a couple of shots in. So there's one of them at 16 kilometers away, not a threat at this distance, but the other Fabuki has to be around here somewhere. The enemy capping isn't really a threat right now. Uh, a lot of the Allied ships are assisting in decapping the base. So there's one of the destroyers at 15 kilometers away. Now where is the Fabuki? Now the Fabuki has to be around here somewhere. Very close distance. I'm pretty sure he didn't pop that smoke. Uh, Baltimore over there 13.1 kilometers away. Not a threat at the moment, but he is capping as well. That must be the ship that the uh, bigger ships are targeting to decap the base. And there is the Fabuki. 10.1 kilometers away, just behind that rock. Is he stationary? So Crazy Harry's waiting to get his guns on him, 8.2 kilometers away, and it looks like the Fubuki is stationary. Now, I wouldn't really recommend capping and being stationary, completely stationary anyway, and the Fubuki's just sitting there, um, wanting to take damage or something, I don't know what he's doing. 1,000 health left. Um, I don't know why you would cap and then just stop, he's just sitting there, he's sitting ducks really, he knew uh, enemies were lurking around here somewhere, and of course he died. Now, he got the kill there, Crazy Harry did very well, decapped the base, and now the cap is not a threat. There's a Baltimore there which is taking substantial damage from allied ships, and also the enemy destroyer is around here as well. So the Montana in the north has done his business, he took out the carrier, and now he's coming back to assist the cap. Now the Baltimore is 10.1 kilometers away and he's taking substantial damage from torpedoes and now he's been knocked out. So now there's only three ships on the enemy team versus five on Crazy Harry's team. So Crazy Harry's not sure where the destroyer is. It could be literally anywhere. He's not in the cap circle because the cap is not being capped by the enemy. So he's probably behind that smoke to his right. So he has smoke if necessary if he does decide to pop out but he's going to do three spreads of torpedoes to hopefully knock out the destroyer. Usually firing torpedoes blind is a very risky maneuver. Uh, a maneuver I usually wouldn't recommend, but there are no allies there, um, so it should be okay. So he's firing some torpedoes to try and lure out the um, destroyer and maybe get a hit. You never really know. So there's two other ships remaining, the Montana and the other enemy battleship. So there's the Montana at 11.6 kilometers away, but Crazy Harry has just fired his torpedoes, so he has those on reload for now, 1 minute 20. He does have smoke if necessary, if, he, if the Montana gets too close. But there's another battleship there, the Imagi. 26,000 health left at 16.6 kilometers. Now in this situation, I've seen a lot of destroyer players rush towards the battleships and deploy torpedoes and hopefully get the kill. Now, Crazy Harry is playing very intelligently. Here. He's circling around the cap, maintaining the cap points because who knows, a Montana and an Amagi can very easily clear an enemy team of ships. Crazy Harry knows this and he's waiting for his torpedoes to reload, which is around a minute from now. So he's circling around the base, um, around top speed, Keeping his distance away from the Montana and the Amagi, they can't spot him. In fact, nothing can spot him at the moment because there are no enemy um, spotting planes. So he's going back to his allies for them to assist. The enemy destroyer is still alive, but he's very, very low. So Crazy Harry is still keeping his distance, maintaining his distance at around 11 kilometers. Crazy Harry has 30 seconds until reload of his torpedoes. Um, his guns aren't within range. He's going to hide behind this small rock just in front of him, wait for his allies to assist him, and cap as much as he can. So, so far, Crazy Harry's doing fantastic in this game. He's got three kills, um, several torpedo hits, and a devastating strike achievement. Crazy Harry has noticed his reload time, and he's slowing down accordingly to get a good angle on the Montana and the Amagi. We've got around 10 seconds left. He has smoke if he's spotted, which is highly unlikely, uh, unless he fires his main guns. So he's telling his allies he's torping in 10 seconds, quite often in this situation where allies rush ahead, rush in front of the destroyer, and subsequently die. Now it's good really that Crazy Harry announced that he's firing so that none of his allies will rush in front of him. So he's firing a full spread of torpedoes, 15 in total. It'll take a few seconds for them to land. He did target the Montana, but the Montana is faced forward from him, so it's kind of hard to hit nonetheless. But the Amagi was sort of side on. Um, Crazy Harry's going to take cover behind this rock and see what happens. Now his allies are now assisting, firing at the Montana. He hasn't been spotted, so the Montana, it looked like maybe that the Montana was firing at him, but he was actually firing on his ally. So the Amagi's just taken some torpedoes and induced flooding, so he's just sitting there very slow and in pain. So the Montana hasn't taken any damage, but the Montana's now gone side on and avoided every single one of those torpedoes. So you may say that that torpedo spread was a bit rushed and because it missed the Montana. So they all missed the Montana, 64,000 health left, but Crazy Harry is capping the base. 
The Imagi is still behind him at 12 kilometers, and there he is. So the Imagi did just take flooding damage, so we know he has just repaired to stop that. Um, and d yeah, I, I, kind of, I kind of feel sorry for the Imagi at this situation. A billion torpedoes heading his way, there's nothing he can do about it. Hit by one and he's dead. He's moving as best he can, he's slow as hell at this point, but nothing he can do about it. 10,000 damage, and he got knocked out. So a very good spread, and the Amagi felt pretty doomed as soon as he saw those torpedoes coming. There's nothing you can really do in that situation with a very poor turning circle radius. So the Montana is at 8km, has his guns pointing elsewhere, but Crazy Harry's team still capping. Uh, Crazy Harry's capping the base. He's the last ship on the enemy team. The destroyer behind him was destroyed. So now he's getting within gun range. Crazy Harry's thinking, um, I don't really want to be the prime target here. He's waiting until his torpedoes are reloaded before he can fire his main guns. Now they're reloaded, he's going to fire a couple of spreads. Now he has to get behind that rock, so he's firing one a bit early, one a bit too early again, and the third one is about right. If you look at the speed of the Montana, he is slowing down, so a couple of spreads a bit earlier is better than the ones in front of the white marker. So he's firing a full spread there. Uh, he can't really change the angle because of where the rock was, but now he's going to fire his main guns. This guy is doomed, only 3,000 health left. Torpedoes will hit him if the allies don't kill him in time. Shots going in again, the allied finished him off. So it was a good game overall. So in that game, Crazy Harry accumulated 430,000 credits, just over 4,000 experience, 202 free experience. He got the devastating strike achievement, 36 hits, five torpedo hits, six critical hits, four destroyed, one set on fire, four floodings, and defended the base three times. In terms of team experience, he came second with 2,700 base experience with four kills. In terms of damage, with high explosive shells, Crazy Harry accumulated 15,000 damage, with torpedoes accumulated 70,000 damage, and with flooding induced, nearly 20,000 damage. So a fantastic game overall. So this really showcases how amazing the long lance torpedoes of the Shimakaze are. They're very formidable if used correctly. Crazy Harry also showed us how to use discretion in a destroyer to not rush towards battleships when it's not necessary to. So it's good to maintain the cap, play it safe, and then attack them when the opportune time comes. So good game to Crazy Harry. So this has been the Conflict of Brawl on the Broadside, where I have a look at some of your replays and some of my replays to show you guys some of the best action in World of Warships. So if you have any replays that you want to send in for me to have a look at and or put them on my channel, then send them to abiru0 at gmail.com. I will put that in the description below. So if you have any games that fit this description, fantastic games from four kills plus to amazing torpedo hits to magazine detonations, by all means send them my way. So thanks a lot for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.